Frederick Banting rose to the pinnacle of Canadian medicine from a beginning which was fraught with personal insecurity. When he finally decided to pursue a career in medicine, it took more than a year for him to work up the confidence to tell his father that he would not follow his footsteps into the ministry. After graduating in medicine at the University of Toronto in 1917, he went immediately to Europe to serve as a battlefield surgeon before returning to Canada to complete his internship. Eager to begin a career, he moved to London, Ontario, where he was the city's only orthopedic surgeon. But few clients came his way, and he worked as a medical demonstrator at the University of Western Ontario to supplement his modest income. Time weighed heavily on Banting, and he had many spare hours to read medical reports and to indulge his curiosity. After reading an article by a Minneapolis doctor, he turned his attention to the pancreas. Convinced that the pancreas held the secret to controlling diabetes, he sought help in finding lab space where he might test his theories. The answer to his needs was to be found in Toronto. Noted endocrinologist Dr. J.R.R. McLeod, about to vacation in Scotland, offered his facilities to Banting for the summer. Teaming with Charles Best, who had been doing experimental research in diabetes, he set to work on the pancreas of dogs and managed in the short space of eight weeks to successfully isolate what would become insulin. By the time McLeod returned to his labs, Banting and Best had gone from dogs to cattle to find enough material for the full production of insulin. Before long, Dr. James Collop came onto the team and insulin was not only purified enough for clinical application, but it was produced in such amounts as to become widely available. The world took notice and Banting was awarded the Nobel Prize. Perhaps even more important was a rare federal government annuity of $7,500. For the first time in his life, the shy and self-deprecating Banting would be financially secure. In 1934, he was awarded a knighthood by the Crown. Banting's curiosity and drive led to further research and discovery over the next 18 years. While on a wartime research project, his life came to an end in a plane crash in Newfoundland. Death came early to Banting, but not as early as to his best childhood friend, who died of juvenile diabetes years before a shy young Canadian would find its treatment.